All right, we come to you today with heavy hearts as the passing of Mike Leach has impacted the entire college football world. And frankly, it's been really neat to kind of look out into the Twitter sphere or into the the social media world, video tributes. It, it's really been cool to seeing just how many people he touched throughout the course of his career. And, and frankly... Um, I don't think, and I've said this before, I'm not sure there are many coaches in college football that have had a bigger impact on college football in the last 20 years than Mike Leach. If you just look at his coaching tree in and of itself, his legacy will live on through those that he touched in the coaching world. Dave Aranda, Neil Brown, Sonny Cumbie, Sonny Dykes, Josh Heupel, uh, Dana Holgerson, Cliff Kingsbury, Seth Luttrell, Lincoln Riley, Ken Wilson, uh, Alex Grinch, great defensive coordinator. The amount of guys that came from that coaching tree is truly phenomenal. You might honestly think about the fact that it's all exclusively offensive-minded people. That's not the case. Ruffin McNeil, Alex Grinch, Ken Wilson, Dave Aranda, just referenced a few that came up on the defensive side. So Mike Leach was not exclusive to just offensive-minded football. He had a lot of great coaches under him that coached on the defensive side as well. On a personal note, this one hits home uh, big time. Uh, this one is impactful to me because I, there are a few. I, now, I never played for Mike Leach. Uh, I did not get the opportunity to go into the building and see him on a daily basis. Um, and I will never make anything about me when it comes to situations like this and, and heartbreaking situations like this at that. Um, but Mike Leach was the first coach that really recruited me. Uh, he was the first coach that, that really came and, and said, Hey, Greg, you, you can play. Uh, if you don't know my story, I, I only played one year in high school. I, I was a backup quarterback, both as a sophomore and as a junior. And, Really, to think about back then, that was back in 2005 or so, and he was the first coach that extended me an offer at a, at a big-time school, and that school was Texas Tech. And I honestly credit him in a lot of ways for giving me the confidence to believe in myself because at that point, as a high school backup, I'm sitting there wondering to myself, am I good enough? Can I play at the next level? Is it worth trying to play at the next level? And it wasn't until Mike Leach extended an offer that I really started to believe that I could do it. So I will always be indebted to him because he gave me the confidence to be able to pursue my dream of becoming a college football player. So I'm so eternally grateful for him. But some other amazing stories about Mike Leach that come to mind when thinking about his legacy. Uh, there's no denying that Mike Leach is a unique soul. Mike Leach does things his way. And if you don't like the way he does it, he doesn't care. And I think there's something that can be applied for all of us in while respecting and appreciating other people's opinion of you. Ultimately, as long as you believe in yourself, that's really all that matters. And that's what I've learned from Mike Leach. He would not deviate from what he believed in. And I think there's something that we should all appreciate about that and something that perha perhaps maybe we can all apply in that regard as well. But I can remember a couple of instances and I know, look, a lot of people have personal anecdotes. I have several. Um, <laughs> one in particular, when I called Mike Leach to tell him that I was going to decommit from Texas Tech uh, and that I was going to be going to Alabama. He, he responded quickly like he can do. <laughs> Better, he's so quick-witted. He was so incredibly fast and sharp. He responded by saying, oh, that'll be good. You'll, you'll throw five times a game. <laughs> and of course, at that point, Alabama definitely didn't prioritize throwing the football. Texas Tech did. They said, well, we're going to at least know that we're going to throw it more on the first drive than you will in the game. Uh, and then sure enough, because Mike Leach never forgets, the first time I saw him in this line of work, 
as a broadcaster, we called a game of his when Washington State went to USC and played on a Friday night. Gardner Minshew was the quarterback. This was in 2018. And they were having a great year. Everything was going really well at that point. And Washington State was going to be a problem. You could just tell they were going to be a problem for everyone in the Pac-12. And I remember before the game, I was really excited to see him because I hadn't seen him or talked to him in quite a while. And he completely ignored me uh, and said nothing to me in the hours leading up to kick. And then when I saw him, I said, hey, coach, it's so good to see you, man. Greg McElroy goes, oh, hey, nice to meet you, Greg. Totally pretended to have not remembered one second of our interaction for years and years and years as uh, as a, a recruit and as a one-time commitment to Texas Tech. And then Dave Nickel, uh, who was his slot receivers coach at Washington State, and God rest his soul as well. Dave Nickel, we lost him at the way too early age of 45. Um, he came over to me a little bit later. He said, did, did coach give you the, I'd never met you before bit. And I said, yeah, he goes, yeah. <laughs> so he, he tried to mess with me a little bit, um, in that regard, but the guy just never forgets. And then the next time I saw him, he said, well, at least you can find solace in knowing that you might've won a championship, but we threw it more times in one game than you did in a season. Uh, so we, we had that constant banter going for quite a while. But of course, most will remember Coach Leach for what happened on the field. And there were two specific moments that stood out to me that helped exemplify who he was. Uh, Mike Leach in 2004, I went to this game as a recruit, so it, I remember it vividly. Uh, it was my junior year in 2004, and we went to SMU to watch Texas Tech play. Sonny Cumbie was the quarterback. He was the, the starting quarterback that year. He had backed up both Cliff Kingsbury and then B.J. Simmons in the two years prior. So Sonny Cumbie was finally getting a chance to make his first start. We were all very excited because uh, Sonny Cumbie was a guy that we had met at Texas Tech camp you know, a couple years earlier. And it's like, oh, I love Sonny. Like, what a cool dude. Like, So we were all very excited. So we got and put our red and black on and we went to SMU Stadium. And we're watching. The game really wasn't that great. Uh, Texas Tech in the second half after what was a pretty sloppy start pulled away and they were up 27-13 or so with about three minutes left and Texas Tech gets the ball back. Well, at that point, three minutes left, up a couple touchdowns. Most coaches would say, hey, we're going to run it out, hand it to the back and let's just get out of here. It was a good hard fought victory on the road in the season opener. But Mike Leach proceeded to throw it over and over and over again, right down the field, throw it, throw it, throw it, throw it. I mean, like, absolutely no regard whatsoever for clock management, no regard for potentially giving off the perception of him running the score up. He didn't care. He said, I'm going to run my offense. This is what I do. And after the game, Phil Bennett was the head coach of SMU. And he came out and he took great offense to Mike Leach throwing it in the end zone with 30 seconds left uh, when the game was clearly completely out of reach. But Mike Leach didn't care, completely unfazed. And he said in the postgame press conference, hey, that's what we do. We don't take knees. We don't run the ball. We're going to throw it. That's how we run our offense. And it's your job to stop it. <laughs> that, I thought, summed up who he was. And then fast forward to 2018, back in that year, what was a great year for the Washington State program. Gardner Minshew and company that were playing in the Alamo Bowl against Iowa State. Brock Purdy and Matt Campbell. It was a great game, back and forth game. Washington State had a lead 28-20. Brock Purdy scores. They don't get the two-point conversion, so they have to get it, kick it off, and, and hopefully get it back uh, within a couple minutes so that they can potentially go down and kick a game-winning field goal. Well, Mike Leach, with about three minutes and 51 seconds left up 28, 26, you would think, Hey, lean on it. No timeouts left for Iowa state. So lean on it, hand it off, milk the clock, right? Just milk the clock. Just kind of see it tick on down. Every single coaching rule in the rule book says you run the ball, you get conservative, you try to play the clock. Well, Mike Leach comes out on first and 10 first drive pass complete to uh, Dee Martin from Gardner Minshew, second down. He throws a fade down the right sideline, extremely low percentage, catches it. Everyone else would be running the football, playing slow, 
Instead, Mike Leach is not just throwing the football, but throwing low percentage passes down the field. And I'm sitting there on the air calling the game thinking, I can't believe he's throwing the ball. <laughs> like That is crazy. But ultimately, get a couple completions. Next thing you know, they put the game on ice and they end it, of course, with a their first one of the few runs they had at the end. And that was a kneel down by Gardner Minshew there at the very end. So Mike Leach, I think he did things his way. And he had a certain way of doing things. And what I will always remember and will always apply to my life here in the future is that there are more than one ways to skin a cat. And even if you are different, even if you see things differently, even if you have maybe a different approach to something that everyone seems to know, for instance, football, everyone seems to think this is how you do things at the end of game situation. You don't have to necessarily do it that way. You can do it the way that works for you. And I think that can be applied in so many different facets of life. And I will always appreciate Mike Leach for teaching us that lesson. Even though he was on the football field and applied it in football ways, I will be able to use that lesson and apply it to my life in the many, many years, hopefully, to come. So gone too soon at the age of 61. But his impact and legacy will always be forever felt. He was an incredible coach. He was an incredible person. And he was a person, too, that could find common ground with just about everyone. It didn't matter if you were a billionaire living next to him in Key West or a guy that he would see at Little Dewey's there in Starkville, Mississippi. He could find common ground with you. He could engage with you. And in some ways, you'd find yourself looking at the clock saying, Coach, I got to (laughs) go because he was so engaged and so willing to talk to anybody. And he could find something that he could relate to you with, regardless of what your interests may be. So gone too soon at the age of 61, our thoughts and prayers go out to his family. Uh, He left behind four beautiful children and his wife. Um, And he, of course, leaves behind a a lot of people that were personally impacted and impacted from a distance on the way he went about his business as a football coach for the last 30 plus years. So we love you, coach. We appreciate you, coach. Please rest in peace.